Hello, my name is Eleanor and I have autism, or am autistic, but I'll get on to that later though. Usually the social mentality <coughs> referred to as us v them describes an in-group us and an out-group them. It in encourages discrimination against the out-group and makes the in-group appear better in some way. It's used in a lot of political campaigns, especially surrounding immigration and religion. Um, in the context I'm speaking, and I'm referring to the in-group as the autistic community and people with autism and the out-group as everyone. <laughs> Um, and the, um, the out group is the as people who don't understand autism and just people without autism. Um, and in the context I'm speaking of, in the context I'm speaking, in, the more prejudice is against the autistic community rather than the other way around. But obviously, whichever. So what creates the divide? Obviously, some people just having autism and other people's not creates a divide, but if it was only that, I wouldn't have to be talking about it. So one of the biggest things contributing to a divide is the stereotyping that surrounds autism. From Rain Man to Sheldon Cooper, TV and film characters only provide very limited views of autistic traits, giving the public very stereotypical views of autistic people. While 10% of people do have the savant abilities that are presented in these characters, a lot don't. So what stereotypes might you have about me? You might think that I don't feel empathy or perhaps I don't feel emotion, but I certainly do, even if it's slightly different to you. You might think that I don't have any social skills or maybe that I don't have any friends, but I can assure you I do have quite a few friends. <laughs> um, uh, girls on the autistic spectrum tend to even subconsciously copy other girls, so they s seem to fit in more with the idea of what it should be, so it's harder to spot girls who are on the autistic spectrum, meaning girls on the autistic spectrum are under-diagnosed under and diagnosed later. I only received my, my diagnosis when I was 12. Um, stereotypes create false perceptions and lead to, can lead to teasing, bullying and just plain misunderstandings. So another factor is just un lack of understanding. While autism is a very complex disorder, it's not that hard to find some it's, it's simple information. I really recommend the National Autistic Society's website. 60% of teachers don't think they have adequate training to teach autistic students, which, and those are the people who are meant to interact with us on a daily basis. Imagine the lack of understanding in the general population. If people don't understand something, they're more likely to be prejudiced against it, which is very, which, something which can be easily prevented. It's also the language used in relation to autism. When people use autism as direct, it's not that hard to find people using autism as a derogatory insult on the internet. And it's also using calling autistic people words such as retarded, which is an outdated medical term. It says no excuse. Some people do have severe learning difficulties, but a lot don't. It's also calling people weird or different as insults, which, which have sparked many, many campaigns such as proud to be different in response. This creates a divide because it spreads misunderstanding and presents autism as an entirely negative thing. And it insults people just who they are. Um, a, 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 something that, a slightly less significant fact is when people try to generalize what autistic people like and don't like. For, um, so, uh, something I see a lot on the internet is people trying to tell other people how you should refer to autistic people, saying Eleanor has autism or Eleanor is autistic. Uh, that people like to say they have autism because it separates the disorder from the person, but when, it's when people try to back it up saying, you say have cancer instead of is cancerous, when cancer is inherently bad while autism isn't. Either is okay, and, it, and, people, and if, you do, if, if, if people just did a quick Google, you'd find out that it's actually down to personal preference. So obviously a culmination of many factors creates a divide which separates autistic people from the rest of the world. Um, sometimes autistic people are separated to, for specialist support and help, for example, sp specialist schools or special educational learning needs in departments within schools. Sometimes autism pe autis oh, autistic, people ha autistic people are se separated because otherwise they'd be bullied and harassed. A popular game that many autistic people play is Minecraft. You've probably heard of it. 
but many people found that on the multiplayer servers they were being harassed and they couldn't enjoy the games. In the summer of 2013, autistic parent Stuart Duncan founded a server called Orcraft, a combination of the words autism and Minecraft. It's currently got over 7,000 players and it's had an amazing impact. And it's been written about by, in many news websites. Uh, despite the good it does, it shouldn't be needed. And, the, and while it is positive, it's still allowing the divide to occur. One, one effect of the divide is people start to use autism and Asperger's as a joke. For example, I've seen something on the internet. Text Spurgers, the inability to detect, detect sarcasm while texting, which isn't a real condition, by the way. It just enforces the stereotypes and only spreads misunderstanding. On a much more serious note, it can lead to bullying, harassment verbally, physically, online, and indirectly. Research done by the Interactive Autism Network suggests that six out of 10 young autistic people report being bullied in the past month, compared to only one in 10 in the normal population. This is unfortunately high. This combined with the stresses that come with autism means that mental health problems are unsurprisingly high in the autistic community. While about 15% of the general population will experience an anxiety or depression-based disorder, this is often estimated to be at or above 50% in the autistic community. Furthermore, autistic people have life, a much lower life expectancy. This, while this is partly due to increased likelihood of seizure-based disorders such as epilepsy, it's also partly to do with suicide. Perhaps it's hardly surprising that autistic people are up to nine times more likely to take their own life. This is how serious this divide can be. This divide will, has and will continue to have devastating consequences. So how can we reduce this divide? Awareness is one of the biggest things. There have been many successful campaigns, including the Lighter Up Blue campaign by Autism Speaks, although it was created on gender norms and sex, sexism, and Autism Speaks are generally, much, generally disliked amongst the autistic community, but that's a whole other issue. Um, if people are more aware, the, 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 the divide will be less and will be more, more united. If you find out someone's autistic, avoid the stereotypes and get to know them on a human level. Ultimately, bullying needs to be taken a lot more seriously to make, and people need to know there's no excuse. I've got personal experience with bullying not being dealt with properly, and it's disgusting what people get away with. And obviously, don't ever use autism as an insult and when there are thousands of other insults you could use. Understanding really is the key here, the key to changing it from us to be them to simply just us. 